for bolt disassembly um, with these guys. So these bolts are very different than anything else that you've probably ever seen. And the way we take them apart, there's a, there's a set screw and basically that screws into the, the cocking piece. And I'll, I'll, I'll remove that first, right? Actually loosen this one up already a little bit, make it easy for the video. So you want to pop that out. And what this does, this set screw basically locks the screw that's in front of it in place. So it locks in place the screw that, it's, that, that is in front of it. And then once that set screws out, you got to, this is your bolt shroud locking pin. This prevents the bolt shroud from rotating with respect to the bolt when the bolt is fully retracted. A lot of, but most companies, most manufacturers don't use these. Uh, Mausers use them. I think some of the AIs have them. Uh, I think on the AIAW has it. Uh, but it's a, the first I've, I've ever seen it was on a Mauser in 1898. I mean, Mauser did a lot of things right. So you want to push that back and you're going to rotate that shroud, let the, let the cam drop in to the, uh, or I'm sorry, let the cocking piece drop into the cocking cam, right? And then you're going to take a T25 Torx and you're going to rotate. You're going to rotate until you see, until you can see light through that hole, right? Because that's going to line up. Yeah, you're going to get these two holes that line up there. And, and through that hole, you're just going to stick a pin through that hole. Like an Allen wrench is fine. And then you can grab hold of the bolt. What that wrench is doing is preventing the firing pin from rotating. Because basically, this wrench is turning a screw that's screwed into the back of the firing pin. So then we we remove that, right? You're going to see a long screw come out of here. Because this screw now, right, this guy is long. It has to pass through the cocking piece, right, and through the bolt handle and through a, bu uh, yeah, through a bushing that's in front of the bolt handle and into the back of the firing pin. Right, so that's why this guy is so long. This effectively becomes the back of your firing pin or the back of your striker. Some guys call them strikers, some guys call them, call them firing pins. Once the screw is out, all this stuff, your bolt shroud and your cocking piece come out easily, right? And there's your little, there's your little uh, bolt shroud locking pin. There's a little spring that gives them a little push. And then you like how I personify everything? Yeah, yeah, that's all good. Everything has its own personal pronoun. But are we supposed to worry about whether these are male or female parts? Or? No? Okay. So you pull, you pull this guy out, right? So now uh, we're ready to remove the handle. We're almost ready to remove the handle, actually. So what you do next is on the underside of the bolt, you'll see... You know, well, you'll see a circle on the top side of the bolt and a square on the bottom side of the bolt. That's basically a pin. Top of the pin's a circle. The very bottom pin's like a square rectangle. That's actually a rectangle. It's not a square, right? So what we're going to do, there's a hole uh, on the on the underside there. We're going to push the bolt handle backwards now as if you were extracting, right? And that that pushes the bushing forward and lines a groove in the bushing with that pin, with that pinhole right there. So then we drop a, we basically drop a pin in the hole, right? We let that come forward. And now you'll feel this got loose. The pin fell out. Out comes the, out comes the, uh, the bolt handle. Now, if you, if you yank that out, of, if you, if you pull the pin out of the hole now or the wrench out of the hole now, we're going to take a bushing and shoot it about 70 yards that way, right? We don't want to do that, right? So put something in the bushing or push down on it with something and then give it a little push forward and you'll see the pin fall out bushing can come back this actually works really really well this is basically this is based what do i have here it's a weha or wea made in germany by germans so germans are smart people right they're good good engineers the only engineers that are better than the germans are the greeks but i don't know about that that's a lie probably <laughs> but anyway um, yeah, so this is a Weha T-handle. It's got a little magnetic thing there. And this is just a T25 Torx bit. You might want to get one of these. I, I kind of like using it, right? So again, German, good. And so the pin came out, the handle came out. Out comes the spring, out comes the firing pin. And then from here, the front of it, just like the nucleus, take your firing pin, knock out your bolt head pin, pull your bolt head out, 
and your extractor and all comes apart. That is an Archimedes bolt. Now, real quick, and to the swap sunny, out the bolt the Utah head. Sun. To swap out the bolt head, is it required to remove all of those parts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, good That's, to know. Yeah. So, okay. So the Archimedes, big benefit. Like, awesome extraction. Absolutely nothing's better. Downside comes at a price. You know, nothing's, nothing in this life is free. You know, tell that to some people that run for office. Trying to give away other people's property. Not right. That's why we make guns. But... <laughs> So you can hold on to your property. But anyway, uh, yeah, it comes at additional complexity. There's no doubt about it. But it's not that bad. And you'll see it, you know, it, they're once they're fully assembled, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend disassembling it to this level in the field, right? Although that's kind of what we're doing. I was say, as we look around our field. <laughs> right. But and we, we also have this nice table that we found here, right? But, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, so to put it back together, start with your bolt head, grab your extractor, lay your extractor right down in there. And while we're at it too, another cool thing about, we're going to go back to the extractor here for just a minute, right? The extractor's got this little lug here and it's got a little angle, a little angled surface that engages an undercut in this pocket, right? So that when you're extracting, right? That, that, un that uh, the extractor slides forward in the bolt head ever so slightly, engages that undercut, and it, it, it prevents it from like, you know, getting kind of, it, it prevents it from snapping over the case head and, and releasing the cartridge uh, prematurely. It's very similar to how Mauser 98 works. Uh, the extractor on the Mauser 98 has a tongue with an undercut that engages, uh, that engages a circumferential groove in the bolt head our mousing field has it too. Most people that do Mauser extractors don't do them correctly. By, and by correctly, I mean they don't do them true to the, you know, the, the original Mauser form, which was very good. It's bad that they don't copy the Mauser, you know, more closely. Anyway, extractor on the bolt head, bolt head in the bolt body. Make sure that if you have a okay so you don't put well you can only put this in one way we're going to get to the the bolt handle later you're going to have to make sure that it goes in through the slot same side as it on the, you know on the side of the bolt that the extractor is on but you're going to see that here in a minute i shouldn't have jumped to that I'm rambling anyway uh bolt head pin goes in the bolt head pin has little little lines engraved on the top can you see that uh, i'm trying to get it to focus there we go Okay, you got a little line engraved on the top on both ends of the pin, right? And then you have the through hole, right? The line, you line the, you line the line up with the length of the bolt, right? So when you put it in, that way, your firing pin will drop all the way in. And then you'll see the tip of your firing pin pop out the hole. Got that? Okay, so firing pins in, drop your spring in drop the bushing in. Now with the bushing, it's uh, it's groove side up, right? You got a groove. Um, right now up is the back of the bolt, right? So this guy's gonna go in groove side up, just like, just like that, right? And I'm gonna get ready with my little pin that I'm gonna, in this case, my little wrench, that I'm gonna put good dexterity is helpful here, which I do not have, but basically, you're going to push down now. Okay, I got the pin in, and I'm going to push and push and push, and then once that, it'll drop in, that pin will drop into that groove. Make sure you have it, because if you don't have it, and you let go of this, you're going to launch that bushing. And, and don't be looking, don't be looking in there while you're doing this. Make sure your eyes are covered, right? That way you don't shoot that bushing through your eyeball. Uh, if it hits you in the forehead, not so bad. It'll just be a lesson to you, but the eyeball would be really bad. So, okay, so we've got the bushing in. Uh, now it's time, again, be careful with the pin. You might even want to keep your finger over it, right? I just hold it in like that. Again, we got the extractor side, the bolt, the bolt handle is going to go in, right? So, and, so you got to put it in right, right? So it's going to go in... Same size extractor, right? And make sure that it looks like this, 
right? With this surface here that's gonna impinge on the receiver, pointing down towards the front of the bolt right now. It's gonna come in, whoops, right there. And then once you got that, once you got that in there, you're gonna put your pin in, make sure your hole is oriented correctly. You can't put this pin in incorrectly. It won't go in because the end, the end of the pin is rectangular. It's not square. So if it goes in, it went in correctly, right? So you're gonna put that in there, push it all the way down. And now, once that pin's in there, now you can take your bolt and if you pull your, your bolt handle back, you'll see that wrench drop out. It'll release the wrench. And now this guy's together and it's reasonably safe at this point. Again, don't, you know, can you, don't do anything stupid. But, okay. So that's all back together. And then um, the, the bolt shroud locking pin and its spring can go in last, actually. Um, we could have taken that, them out beforehand. Um, but basically, so what we're gonna do now, the, the uh, bolt shroud goes into the back of the bolt, right? You'll just, it's sort of bayonet style. Most of you guys are probably familiar. Um, but you'll find, you know, it, you, you gotta just keep rotating it until it drops in, right? And then, and then you can do a few things, I guess. But then, uh, what should you do next? I'm starting to lose track of my mind here. Okay, so orient your bolt shroud so that it looks about, so it looks like, you know, it'll go into the receiver. Uh, basically with a slot towards the bottom of the bolt, but it's kind of hard to describe what the bottom of the cylinder is, right? So uh, that I'm going to have to leave that one up to you. <laughs> so then drop your your cocking piece in, right? Again, the cocking piece will really only go in one way. Can't go in this way. It just won't work. So if it goes in, it went in correctly, right? And then the next thing in is the screw, and then you're gonna get your T25. Now you gotta make sure your cocking piece is in the bottom of your cocking cam or else your screw won't reach the firing pin. All right, so put that in there, screw that guy down. All right, and now if you just keep turning it, right, you're gonna to wanna to line up um, so you can see light through that hole, which is right there, and put a pin back through here because now we gotta tighten this up, right? And then, and then tighten that guy up. And I think we do about 65 inch pounds there, maybe more. Uh, it's a high, it's a high strength steel screw, high strength steel firing pin. So you can bear down on it pretty hard, but 65 inch pounds, probably plenty. Uh, so that, that went in there, uh, leave this in. You're gonna need it again for the, the set screw that's gonna lock that in place, right? Stick that in there. So stick that guy on there like that and then screw this guy down. Right, and then tighten it up. So, and you probably want a little bit of Loctite uh, on both the screw for your uh, firing pin, on both the, the thread of the long screw and the, uh, the short screw, the little set screw, the locking screw. Loctite's good. I always recommend it. Um, and that's it. And once you have that, you're good to go. The other thing is, well, we're not totally done yet, right? So now we have to get this guy back in. So to do that, you can just rotate this, this by hand, or you can just use a wrench, which makes it really easy, right? Bring it up. And ultimately, those notches will be aligned, right? Because this little pin is going to be poking out through that notch. So I just want to rotate this to about here. Right, and then I want to from there, I can drop the spring in and I can put this little guy in. Oops, so I can push that in, I can hold it down now. Right, can you see that? Mm -hmm. And then I can start rotating this back the other way, and it clips in there. And then once, once, you, once you're there, and you know you're good. Another thing that was worth mentioning, uh, I don't like running oil on the on the firing pin spring or the firing pin uh the only thing the only thing i really recommend lubricating on a bolt is uh the interface between the the 
bolt shroud and the bolt and these caulking cams here, right? Try not to have any grease or oil on your firing pin. You want your firing pin to run dry. Having a little bit of oil and grease on your, on your caulking cams is just fine, but you want a dry firing pin. And the reason for that is under cold temperatures, the, uh, the viscosity of uh, most lubricants increases and that robs, that can, having to shear a, a viscous fluid, like a, like a, you know, like a thick oil or a grease, um, robs a lot of energy from your, uh, from basically your ignition. Uh, so that's, that's bad. That, that can result in light strikes. We've seen that. We've seen that actually quite a few times. And that's it. That's a, uh, that's an Archimedes bolt. It's an Archimedes action. Sorry about the length of the video, but, uh, you got now you actually now you know what you're getting so